Gases, Fluid Dynamics, Part 2. Objectives, Gases, Describe Earth's Atmosphere, Explain What Causes Atmospheric Pressure, Describe How a Simple Mercury Barometer Shows Pressure, Explain How an Aneroid Barometer Works, Describe the relationship between the pressure and volume for a given mass of gas at a constant temperature. Explain what causes an object to rise in the air around it. Describe the relationship between the speed of a fluid at any point and the pressure at that point for steady flow. Explain how horizontal flight is possible. The big idea. Gas mo molecules are far apart and can move freely between collisions. Gases are similar to liquids in that they flow. Hence, both are called fluids. The primary difference between gases and liquids is the distance between molecules. In a liquid, the molecules are close together where they continually experience attractive forces from the surrounding molecules. These forces strongly affect the motion of the molecules. In a gas, the molecules are far apart, allowing them to move freely between collisions. When two molecules in gas collide, if one gains speed in the collision, the other loses speed, such that their total kinetic energy is unchanged. A gas expands to fill all space available to it and takes the shape of its container. Only when the quantity of gas is very large, such as in Earth's atmosphere or in a star, does gravitation determine the shape of the gas. How can you levitate an object? Bend the elbow of a flexible straw approximately 90 degrees. Place the long section of the straw in your mouth and hold a tennis ball a few centimeters above the short section. 3. Blow steadily through the straw as you release the ball. Keep trying until the ball levitates. While still blowing, increase the angle between the long and short sections of the straw so that the airstream is not directed beneath the ball. Observing, what happened when the airstream was no longer directly beneath the ball? How large can the angle between the two sections of the straw be if the ball is to remain suspended? Making generalizations. What keeps the ball suspended when the airstream is not directly beneath the ball? 20.1, the atmosphere. We don't have to look far to find a sample of gas. We live in an ocean of gas, our atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere consists of molecules that occupy space and extends many kilometers above Earth's surface. The molecules are energized by sunlight and kept in continual motion like the gas molecule shown in figures 20.1. Without Earth's gravity, they would fly off into outer space. And without the sun's energy, the molecules would eventually cool and just end up as matter on the ground. Molecules in the gaseous state are in continuous motion. Fortunately, because of an energizing sun and because of gravity, we have an atmosphere. Unlike the ocean, which has a very definite upper surface, Earth's atmosphere has no definite upper surface. And unlike the ocean's uniform density at any depth, the density of the atmosphere decreases with altitude. Molecules in the atmosphere are closer together at sea level than at higher altitudes. The atmosphere is like a huge pile of feathers, where those at the bottom are more squashed than those near the top. The air gets thinner and thinner, less dense, the higher one goes. It eventually thins out into space, even in the vacuous regions of interplanetary space, there is 
a gas density of about one molecule per cubic centimeter. This is primarily hydrogen, the most plentiful element in the universe. Figure 20.2 shows how thin our atmosphere is. Note that 50% of the atmosphere is below 5.6 kilometers, 18,000 feet. 75% of the atmosphere is below 11 kilometers or 56,000 feet. 90% of our atmosphere is below 17.7 kilometers and 99% of the atmosphere is below an altitude of about 30 kilometers. Compared with Earth's radius, 30 kilometers is very small. To give you an idea of how small the thickness of the atmosphere relative to the size of the world is, like the thickness of the skin of an apple relative to the size of the apple. Our atmosphere is a delicate and finite, life-sustaining, thin shell of air. That's why we should take care of it. Concept check. What is the atmosphere? 20.2. The temperature of the atmosphere drops as one goes higher until it rises again at very high altitudes. 20.2. Atmospheric pressure. We live at the bottom of an ocean of air. The atmosphere, much like water in a lake, exerts pressure. Atmospheric pressure is caused by the weight of air, just as water pressure is caused by the weight of water. We are so accustomed to the invisible air around us that we sometimes forget it has weight. Perhaps a fish forgets about the weight of water in the same way. Figure 20.3 illustrates this point. Table 20.1 shows how the density of air changes with temperature. At sea level, one cubic meter of air at 20 degrees Celsius has a mass of about 1.2 kilograms. Figure 23, you don't notice the weight of the bag of water while you're submerged in water. Similarly, you don't notice the weight of air as you walk around in it. Calculate the number of cubic meters in your room. Multiply by 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter, and you'll have the mass of air in your room. Don't be surprised if it has more mass than your kid sister. Air is heavy if you have enough of it. For example, it takes more than 1,800 kilograms of air to pressurize the jet shown in figure 20.4. If your kid sister doesn't believe air has weight, maybe it's because think. She's surrounded by air all the time. Hand her a plastic bag of water and she'll tell you it has weight. But hand her the same bag of water while she's submerged in a swimming pool and she won't feel its weight because the bag is surrounded by water. Consider a super long hollow bamboo pole like the one shown in figure 20.5 that reaches up through the atmosphere for 30 kilometers. Figure 20.4, fully pressurizing a 777 jumbo jet adds 1,800 kilograms to its mass. Figure 20.5, the mass of air that would occupy a bamboo pole that extends to the top of the atmosphere is about one kilogram. This air has a weight of 10 newtons. Think about how many kilograms of air occupy a classroom that has a 200 square meter floor area and a four meter high ceiling. Think, answer, 960 kilograms. The volume of air is 200 square meters times four meters, which equals 800 cubic meters. Each cubic meter of air has a mass of 1.2 grams, so 800 times 1.2 equals 960 kilograms, about a ton. Suppose the inside cross-sectional area of the pole 
is one square centimeter. If the density of the air inside the pole matches the density of air outside, the enclosed mass of air would be about one kilogram. The weight of this much air is about 10 newtons. So air pressure at the bottom of the bamboo pole would be 10 newtons per square centimeter. Of course, the same is true without the bamboo pole. There are 10,000 square centimeters in one square meter. So a column of air, one square meter in cross-sectional area that extends up through the atmosphere as illustrated in figure 20.6 has a mass of about 10,000 kilograms. The weight of this air is about 100,000 newtons, 10 to the fifth newtons. This weight produces a pressure of 100,000 newtons per square meter, or equivalently 100,000 pascals, or 100 kilo pascals. Figure 20.6, the weight of air that bears down on a one square meter surface at sea level is about 100,000 newtons. More exactly, the average atmospheric pressure at sea level is 101.3 kilopascals. The pressure of the atmosphere is not uniform. Aside from variations with altitude, there are variations in atmospheric pressure at any one locality due to moving air currents and storms. Measurement of changing air pressure is important to meteorologists in predicting weather. Concept check. What causes atmospheric pressure? Notes. Air is heavy if you have enough of it. 20.3, the simple barometer. An instrument used for measuring the pressure of the atmosphere is called a barometer. A simple mercury barometer is illustrated in figure 20.7. A glass tube longer than 76 centimeters and closed at one end is filled with mercury and tipped upside down in a dish of mercury. The mercury in the tube runs out of the submerged open bottom until the level falls to about 76 centimeters. The empty space trapped above, except for some mercury vapor, is a vacuum. Notes. Health-wise, mercury is a no-no and is something you don't want to play around with. Figure 20.7, in a simple mercury barometer, variations above and below the average column height of 76 centimeters are caused by variations in atmospheric pressure. The vertical tube of the mercury column remains constant even when the tube is tilted, unless the top of the tube is less than 76 centimeters above the level in the dish, in which case the mercury completely fills the tube. Why does mercury behave this way? The explanation is similar to the reason a simple seesaw balances when the weights of people at its two ends are equal. The barometer balances when the weight of liquid in the tube exerts the same pressure as the atmosphere outside. Whatever the width of the tube, a 76 centimeter column of mercury weighs the same as the air that would fill a super tall 30 kilometer tube of the same width. If the atmospheric pressure increases, then it will push the mercury column higher than 76 centimeters. The mercury is literally pushed up into the tube of a barometer by atmospheric pressure. How can you transfer liquid with a drinking straw. One, lower a drinking straw into a glass of water and place your finger above the top of the straw. What happens when you lift the straw out of the water? Now lift your fingers from the top of the straw. What happens? Think, why didn't the water fall out of the straw when you first lifted it out of the water? The height of the mercury in the tube of a simple barometer is a measure of the atmospheric pressure. Could water be used to make a barometer? The answer is yes, but the glass tube 
would have to be much longer, 13.6 times as long to be exact. You may recognize this number as the density of mercury relative to that of water. The volume of water, 13.6 times that of mercury, is needed to provide the same weight as the mercury in the tube or in the imaginary tube of outside air. So the height of the tube would have to be at least 13.6 times taller than the mercury column. A water barometer would have to be 13.6 times 0.76 or 10.3 meters high, too tall to be practical. The operation of a barometer is similar to the process of drinking through a straw, which is shown in figure 20.8. By sucking, you reduce the air pressure in the straw that is placed in a drink. Atmospheric pressure on the liquid surface pushes liquid up into the reduced pressure region. Strictly speaking, the liquid is not sucked up. It is pushed up the straw by the pressure of the atmosphere. If the atmosphere is prevented from pushing on the surface of the drink, as in the party trick bottle with the straw through the airtight cork stopper, one can suck and suck and get no drink. Figure 20.8 you cannot drink soda through a straw unless the atmosphere exerts a pressure on the surrounding liquid. If you understand these ideas, you can understand why there is a 10.3 meter limit on the height water can be lifted with vacuum pumps. The old fashioned farm type pump shown in figure 20.9 operates by producing a partial vacuum in a pipe that extends down into the water below. The atmospheric pressure exerted on the surface of the water simply pushes the water up into the region of reduced pressure inside the pipe. Can you see that even with a perfect vacuum, the maximum height to which water can be lifted is 10.3 meters? Concept check. How does a simple mercury barometer show pressure. Figure 20.9, the atmosphere pushes water from below up into a pipe that is evacuated of air by the pumping action. 20.4, the aneroid barometer. Figure 20.10 shows a popular classroom demonstration used to illustrate atmospheric pressure. A can containing a little water is heated until steam forms. Then the can is capped securely and removed from the source of heat. There is now less air inside the can than before it was heated. Why? Because when the water boils and changes to steam, the steam pushes air out of the can. When the sealed can cools, the pressure inside is reduced because steam inside the can condenses to a liquid when it cools. The greater pressure of the atmosphere outside the can then proceeds to crush the can. Figure 2010, atmospheric pressure is used to crush a can. A, the can is heated until steam forms. B, the can is capped and removed from the heat. C, when the can cools, the air pressure inside is reduced. The pressure of the atmosphere is even more dramatically shown when a 50 gallon drum is crushed by the same procedure. A much more subtle application of atmospheric crushing is used in an aneroid barometer. An aneroid barometer is an instrument that measures variations in atmospheric pressure without a liquid. An example of an aneroid barometer is shown in figure 2011. This small portable instrument is more prevalent than the mercury barometer. An aneroid barometer uses a small metal box that is partially exhausted of air. The box has a slightly flexible lid that bends in or out as atmospheric pressure changes. Figure 2011. 
aneroid barometers work without liquids? A. Variations in atmospheric pressure are indicated on the face of the instrument. B. The spring and lever system can be seen in this cross-sectional diagram. The pressure difference between the inside and outside is less drastic than that of a crushed can in figure 2010. Motion of the lid is indicated on a scale by a mechanical spring and lever system. Since atmospheric pressure decreases with increasing altitude, a barometer can be used to determine elevation. An aneroid barometer calibrated for altitude is called an altimeter, altitude meter. Some of these instruments are sensitive enough to indicate changes in elevation of less than a meter. Concept check. How does an aneroid barometer work? 20.5 Boyle's Law. The air pressure inside the inflated tires of an automobile is considerably more than the atmospheric pressure outside. The density of the air inside is also more than that of the air outside. To determine the relationship between pressure and density, think of the molecules inside the tire. Inside the tire, the molecules behave like tiny table tennis balls, perpetually moving helter-skelter and banging against the inner walls. Their impacts on the inner surface of the tire produce a jittery force that appears to our core senses as a steady push. This pushing force averaged over a unit of area provides the pressure of the enclosed air. Suppose there are twice as many molecules in the same volume. Think. If you squeeze a balloon to one-third its volume, how much will the pressure inside increase? The pressure in the balloon is increased three times. No wonder balloons break when you squeeze them. A scuba diver 10.3 meters deep breathes compressed air. If she holds her breath while returning to the surface, how much does the volume of her lungs tend to increase? Atmospheric pressure can support a column of air 10.3 meters high. So the pressure in water due to the weight of the water alone equals atmospheric pressure at a depth of 10.3 meters. Taking the pressure of the atmosphere at the water surface into account, the total pressure at this depth is twice atmospheric pressure. Unfortunately for the scuba diver, her lungs will tend to inflate to twice their normal size if she holds her breath while rising to the surface. A first lesson in scuba diving is not hold your breath when ascending. To do so can be fatal. As illustrated in figure 20.12, the air density is then doubled if the molecules move at the same average speed, or equivalently, if they have the same temperature, then to a close approximation, the number of collisions will double. This means the pressure is doubled, so pressure is proportional to density. The density of the air can also be doubled by simply compressing the air to half its volume. We increase the density of air in a balloon when we squeeze it, and likewise increase air density in the cylinder of a tire pump when we push the piston downward. Consider the cylinder with the movable piston in figure 2013. Figure 20.12. When the density of the air in the tire is increased, the pressure is increased. Figure 2013, when the volume of gas is decreased, the density and therefore pressure are increased. If the piston is pushed downward so that the volume is half the original volume, the density of molecules will be doubled and the pressure will correspondingly be doubled. Decrease the volume to 
a third its original value, and the pressure will be decreased by three, and so on. Notice from these examples that the product of pressure and volume is the same for any given quantity of gas. For example, a double pressure multiplied by a halved volume gives the same value as a tripled pressure multiplied by a one-third volume. Boyle's law describes the relationship between the pressure and volume of a gas. Or Boyle's law can look like this. PV equals big P times little v, or PV equals little p times big V. Boyle's law states that the product of pressure and volume for a given mass of gas is a constant as long as the temperature does not change. Pressure times volume for a sample of gas at one-third is equal to any different pressure times different volume of the same sample of gas at any other temperature. In equation form, P1V1 equals P2V2, where P1 and V1 represent the original pressure and volume, respectively, and P2V2, the second or final pressure and volume. Boyle's Law is named after Robert Boyle, the 17th century physicist who was created with its discovery. Scuba divers, such as the one in figure 2014, must be aware of Boyle's Law when ascending. As the diver returns to the surface, pressure decreases and thus the volume of air in the diver's lungs increases. This is why a diver must not hold his or her breath while ascending. The expansion of the diver's lungs beyond capacity can be very dangerous or even fatal. Concept check. What does Boyle's Law state? Figure 2014. A scuba diver must be aware of Boyle's Law when ascending to the surface. 20.6. Buoyancy of air. In the last chapter, you learned about buoyancy in liquids. All of the rules for buoyancy were stated in terms of fluids rather than liquids. The reason is simple. The rules hold for gases as well as liquids. Consider the dirigible and the fish in figure 2015. The physical laws that explain a dirigible aloft in the air are the same that explain a fish afloat in water. Archimedes' principle for air states that an object surrounded by air is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the air displaced. Recall that a cubic meter of air at ordinary atmospheric pressure and room temperature has a mass of about 1.2 kilograms. So its weight is about 12 newtons. Figure 2015, the dirigible and the fish both hover at a given level for the same reason. Therefore, any one cubic meter object in air is buoyed up with a force of 12 newtons. If the mass of the one cubic meter object is greater than 1.2 kilograms, so that its weight is greater than 12 newtons, it will fall to the ground when released. If a one cubic meter object has a mass of less than 1.2 kilograms, it will rise in the air. Any object that has a mass less than the mass of an equal volume of surrounding air will rise. An object less dense than air around it will rise. A gas-filled balloon, such as the one shown in 2016, rises in the air because it is less dense than the surrounding air. When you next see a large dirigible airship aloft in the air, think of it as a giant fish. 20.16, everything is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the air it displaces. Both remain aloft as they swim through their fluids 
for the same reason. They both displace their own weights of fluids. When in motion, the dirigible may be raised or lowered by means of horizontal rudders or elevators. Concept check. What causes an object to rise? Think. Two rubber balloons are inflated to the same size, one with air, the other with helium. Which balloon experiences the greater buoyant force? Why does the air-filled balloon sink and the helium-filled balloon float? Both balloons are buoyed up with the same buoyant force because they displace the same weight of air. The reason the air-filled balloon sinks in air is because it is heavier than the buoyant force that acts on it. The helium-filled balloon is lighter than the buoyant force that acts on it. Or, put another way, the air-filled balloon is slightly more dense than the surrounding air, principally because it is filled with compressed air. Helium, even somewhat compressed, is much less dense than air. 20.7 Bernoulli's Principle The discussion of fluid pressure thus far has been confined to stationary fluids. Motion produces an additional influence. Relationship between fluid pressure and speed. Most people think that atmospheric pressure increases in a gale, tornado, or hurricane. Actually, the opposite is true. High-speed winds may blow the roof off your house, but the pressure within air, the gain speed, is actually less than for still air of the same density. As strange as it may first seem, when the speed of a fluid increases, its pressure decreases. This is true for all fluids, liquids and gases alike. Consider a continuous flow of water through a pipe. Because water doesn't bunch up, the amount of water that flows past any given section of the pipe is the same as the amount that flows past any other section of the same pipe. This is true whether the pipe widens or narrows. As a consequence of continuous flow, the water in the wide parts will slow down, and in the narrow parts it will speed up. You can observe this when you put your finger over the outlet of a water hose. As shown in figure 2017, this is also apparent when water flows through a narrow part of a brook. Daniel Bernoulli, a Swiss scientist of the 18th century, advanced the theory of water flowing through pipes. Figure 2017, because the flow is continuous, water speeds up when it flows through the narrow or shallow part of a brook. This relationship between the speed of a fluid and the pressure in the fluid is described by Bernoulli's principle. He found that the greater the speed of flow, the less is the force of the water at right angles sideways to the direction of flow. The pressure at the walls of the pipes decrease when the speed of the water increases. Bernoulli found this to be a principle of both liquids and gases. Bernoulli's principle in its simplest form states that when the speed of a fluid increases, the pressure of the fluid decreases. Bernoulli's principle is a consequence of the conservation of energy, although surprisingly he developed it long before the concept of energy was formalized. The full energy picture for a fluid in motion is quite complicated. Simply stated, higher speed means lower pressure and lower speed means higher pressure. The decrease of fluid pressure with increasing speed may at first seem surprising, particularly if we fail to distinguish between the pressure within the liquid and the pressure exerted by the fluid on something that interferes with its flow. Note, a fluid continues to move at constant volume per unit of time through different cross sections of a pipe or confined region. This is called the 
principle of continuity. The pressure within the first moving water in a fire hose is relatively low, whereas the pressure that the water can force on anything in its path to slow it down may be huge. Streamlines. In steady flow, one small bit of fluid follows along the same path as a bit of fluid in front of it. The motion of a fluid is steady. Flow follows streamlines, which are represented by thin lines in figure 2018 and later figures. Streamlines are the smooth paths or trajectories of the bits of fluid. The lines are closer together in the narrower regions where the flow is faster and the pressure is less. Pressure differences are nicely evident when liquid contains air bubbles. Figure 2018. Water speeds up when it flows into a narrower pipe. A. The close together streamlines indicate increased speed and decreased internal pressure. B. The bubbles are bigger in the narrow part because internal pressure there is less. The volume of an air bubble depends on the pressure of the surrounding liquid. Where the liquid gains speed, pressure is lowered and bubbles are bigger, as in figure 2018b indicates bubbles are squeezed smaller in slower high pressure liquids. Bernoulli's principle holds only for steady flow. If the flow speed is too great, the flow may become turbulent and follow a changing curling path known as an eddy. In that case, Bernoulli's principle does not hold notes. Pressure inside a fluid is different from the pressure it can exert on anything that changes its momentum. 20.8 Applications of Bernoulli's Principle Bernoulli's Principle partly accounts for the flight of birds and aircraft. Try blowing air across the top of a sheet of paper as shown in figure 2019. The paper rises because air passes faster over the top of the sheet of paper than below it. Lift. Similarly, the shape and orientation of airplane wings ensure that air passes somewhat faster over the top surface of the wing than beneath the lower surface, as shown by the streamlines in figure 2020. Pressure above the wing is less than pressure below the wing. Figure 2019, the paper rises when you blow air across the top of it. 2020, air pressure above the wing is less than the pressure below the wing. Lift is the upward force created by the difference between the air pressure above and below the wing. Even a small pressure difference multiplied by a large wing area can produce a considerable force. When lift equals weight, horizontal flight is possible. The lift is greater for higher speeds and larger wing areas. Hence, low speed gliders have very large wings relative to the size of the fuselage. The wings of faster moving aircraft are relatively small. Atmospheric pressure decreases in a strong wind. As figure 2021 shows, air pressure above a roof is less than air pressure inside the building when a wind is blowing. Figure 2021, in high winds, air pressure above a roof can drastically decrease. This produces a lift that may result in the roof being blown off. Roofs are usually constructed to withstand increased downward loads, the weight of snow, for example, but not always for increased upward forces.
unless the building is well vented. The stagnant air inside can push the roof off. Curveballs. Bernoulli's principle is partly involved in the curved path of spinning balls. When a moving baseball of any kind of ball spins, unequal air pressures are produced on opposite sides of the ball. In figure 2022b, the streamlines are closer together at B than at A for the direction of spin shown. Air pressure is greater at A and the ball curves as indicated. 2022, Bernoulli's principle is partly involved in the curved paths of spinning balls. A. The streamlines are the same on either side of the non-spinning ball. B. A spinning ball produces a crowding of streamlines. Boat collisions. Bernoulli's principle explains why passing ships run the risk of a sideways collision. Water flowing between the ships travels faster than water flowing past the outer sides. Streamlines are closer together between the ships than outside. Hence, water pressure acting against the hulls is reduced between the ships. Unless the ships are steered to compensate for this, the greater pressure against the outer sides of the ship forces them together. Figure 2023 20, shows a demonstration of this which you can do in your kitchen sink. Loosely moor a pair of toy boats side by side, then direct a stream of water between them. The boats will draw together and collide. Figure 2023, 20, try this experiment in your sink and watch Bernoulli's principle in action. Shower curtains. A similar thing happens to a bathroom shower curtain when the shower water is turned on full blast. Air near the water stream flows into the lower pressure stream and is swept downward with the falling water. Air pressure inside the curtain is reduced and the atmospheric pressure outside pushes the curtain inward, providing an escape route for the downward swept air. This effect is small compared with the convection produced by temperature differences. But nevertheless, the next time you are taking a shower and the curtain swings in against your legs, think of Daniel Bernoulli. Concept check. How is horizontal flight possible? Summary, gases. Earth's atmosphere consists of molecules that occupy space and extends many kilometers above Earth's surface. Atmospheric pressure is caused by the weight of air, just as water pressure is caused by the weight of water. The height of the mercury in a tube of a simple barometer is a measure of atmospheric pressure. An aneroid barometer uses a small metal box that is partially exhausted of air. The box has a slightly flexible lid that bends in or out as atmospheric pressure changes. Boyle's law states that the product of pressure and volume for a given mass of gas is a constant as long as the temperature does not change. Any object less dense than the air around it will rise. Bernoulli's principle in its simplest form states that when the speed of a fluid increases, pressure in the fluid decreases. When lift equals weight, horizontal flight is possible.